Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. It's been another busy week, hasn't it, for the football club, aren't they all? Without any further ado, let's take you across the English Channel to where Everton played Lyon earlier this week in Europa League Group E. any excuse it's not my nature to do that um, you know I want the team to fight and I want us all to fight and you know that's what we've got to do that's the only thing you can do in a situation like this is, is roll your sleeves up work hard you know work even harder give more um, and you know if you get everybody doing that you know from my experience you you, know, you win more games than you lose and um, we certainly need to win a game on Sunday we stuck our game plan what Unzi give us and I thought we, we did it very well, very good until about, like I say, till the first goal went in really. And we just got a bit too spread and lost our way. And that's what they do. They're a counting and tatting side and they're a fast side when, when they get the ball and they, they came on us. And we just need to iron out mistakes as a group of lads. And um, I think if we're going to get beat, make sure it's only 1 0. The lads' effort was there for all to see, the commitment um, and desire. You know, the game plan was there you know, for nearly 70 minutes. Um, you know, we stuck to it perfectly uh, and created opportunities as well. You know, we've had a couple of opportunities where we could and should have, um, you know, hit the back of the net. But um, no, it's a disappointing result. Um, and again, you know, for 70 minutes of performance that, that was that was decent. So, um, you know, we've got to we've got to dismiss it. Unfortunately, it's not something I. I want to do is to dismiss, you know, games when it's particularly when you lose, because you know you want to have the time to pick the bones out of them and, and go through and, and, and rectify. But you know we've got a massive, you know, turnaround, you know, a quick turnaround, and a massive game on Sunday where now, you know, it's a must-win game and it's a massive cup final for me. It's not going our way at the moment, and so hopefully that'll turn. We've got a big, massive game Sunday to focus on. Um, once we get that win, hopefully that kickstarts our season. Well, we're in the mix zone here at the Olympic Lyon Stadium. The players have just come off the pitch. 3-0 defeat for Everton, but Graeme Stewart, you and I have just been speaking to Robbie Savage and even he said it was harsh. I think it was harsh, to be totally honest with you. OK, we can't dress it up too much because we've lost a game of football and we're out of the Europa League. But for 65 minutes, we were more than in that game, more than in the game. And I genuinely feel sorry for the lads, I really do, because I think that that deflection from Morgan's tackle can go anywhere on the park. Typically for us at this moment in time, it goes right into the path of Triori, who bears down on goal, and credit to him, scores a, ter a terrific finish. But that's just the type of luck you get when things are struggling. Idrissa Gay has an opportunity to score, and if that goes in, we've got a different ball game. Yeah, good work. You know, good work from Aaron Lennon, a lovely deft touch from Adam Ola Lookman and Garner's right in the middle of the goal and you, I'm expecting the net to bulge. Uh, you know, he scuffed it a little bit, so disappointing because that was a really good opportunity for us to, you know, to score the goal and that may have made all the difference. And it's, it's fine lines, fine margins football and it's just disappointing. Yet again, we go behind and instead of when we could have been up and it just totally t changes everybody's mindset. And, you know, as it happens again, we're stood here talking about another defeat. But there were positives. We do look a bit more coherent as a side. We've started to create a few more chances. The work rate was good. Obviously, the wheels fell off and they did fall off with the, uh, in the last 20 minutes. But that's that's what we've got to kind of over. We've got to overcome it somehow, some way. How easy is it, or how difficult is it for players to take the positives from a defeat and take them into the next game? Because we've got to stop losing games. Well, it is difficult because you know when you win games of football, you've, you you know you feel you feel like you can't lose. The flip side of that is when you're losing games of football, left, right, and centre, you're scratching around thinking where can we possibly win a, win a game from. And that's the disappointing thing for us, but that's the job of David Unsworth, John Ebrill, Duncan Ferguson, everybody at the training ground to get together and try and fashion some kind of performance on Sunday against Watford to get us a win. Because that's the most important now th thing, three points against the Premier League side Watford that have done well so far this season. There have been signs, Graham, haven't there? Well, there signs. are signs, but look... 
we always try and be upbeat, we always try and be positive, but it's becoming more and more difficult because with every passing week we're losing games of football. And I've been there as a player myself and it's a horrible thing and don't for one minute think that you know the players don't care because they genuinely do care. It's their it's their livelihoods. You know, they they don't want to go out every every other game and lose a game of football. No one plays to lose. So I, I certainly don't think it's an attitude thing with the players. I think they're trying. I think over the last three games you've seen signs within David Unsworth's sides that, you know, given a bit of time, he can get a tune out of these players. We just need, a, you know, dare I say it, you do need a little bit of lady luck somewhere along the way, and we haven't had any tonight. Well, there have been signs under David Unsworth. The mood in the camp is certainly better than it was, and actually Williams, for one, thoroughly agrees. We're enjoying working with Unzi and you know training's good and uh, nice and sharp and you know you know it's been a difficult season so far but I think that's football and you know we're all used to it you know it happens at times you know as a player that, that's going to happen and um, you get over it and and you look forward to the next game and you just work as hard as you can. Is there a bit more responsibility on the shoulders of the senior players at times like this because changes of managers at club and international level are part of the game but the younger boys perhaps haven't experienced that. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think a lot of the a lot of the younger players were saying that's the first time they've they've lost a manager. So, um, you know, for, for us, it's, it's happened to a bit more. You know, you just you, you, I suppose you have to step up a little bit and you know talk to them, and just let them know, you know what's what, and you know just to get your head down. And it's not something that you can control. It you know once it's happened, then then you just got to do your best for the next guy. And and as I say, um, you know, disappointing with, with with Ronald. I think we all liked him, and um, you know I did certainly. And uh, you know, it's never nice to see a manager go, and you always feel, you know, responsible for that as well as players. So, but you, we've got another game always, you know. So you have to just, as I say, you know, support the guy who's in charge, and you know, we're certainly doing that, and, and we're enjoying working with him. And um, you just move on to the next one. The players are hurting, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it, it always so it's, it's a difficult time when you're not winning games, and just the same as everyone involved with Everton Football Club is hurting at the minute. You know, it definitely hurts us. We we're the ones that have to go out there every week, and you know, if we don't get the win or don't perform, you know, we have to wait for the next game again, and you know, then our whole you know, our whole week, you know, is is a, is a bad one, and you have to fight through it into the next one. There's enough experience and enough quality in there, isn't it, to turn things around? Yeah, definitely. You know, as I, as I said before, this happens. It's happened to me before. It's probably happened to all the lads, um, and it, you know, might not be the last time. You know, for some of the, for the younger boys and stuff. So, you know, we've experienced it before, and you know, all you can do is you, you work as hard as you can, stick together, and you try and battle yourself out of it. And as you say, you know, we we do have a lot of experience in that team, and we have, we definitely have a lot of quality in it. So, it's about you know trying to get a little bit of momentum, a few wins, get the confidence back, and then see where you can go from there. Change of location here, as you can see, myself and Graeme Stewart are in the heart of Lyon, just outside the team hotel, as a matter of fact. And of course, while David Unsworth has whipped the first team, Graeme, he's left the under-23s in the more than capable hands of Francis Jeffers, and a, a terrific win, another terrific win for them at Swansea last week. Yeah, they've done really well, the 23s, uh, picked up their form really well, and as you say, capable hands in Franny Jeffers, plenty of experience in Franny, and he'll be delighted with the reaction from the players, because they went 1-0 down on the half-hour mark, and they showed all their character and Franny influenced it as well by making a couple of substitutions. But Luke Garbutt gets us, gets us back into the game with a well-taken penalty. We know what a good le left foot Luke has. Mm. Um, and then the two substitutions he makes in Fraser Hornby and Shane Lavery, you know, they, they combine. Fraser puts a terrific cross in from the right-hand side and Shane produces a wonderful finish into the top corner. And all of a sudden, we've won the game, 90th minute, and the lads celebrate in, in the fashion that you'd expect. You can see how much it means to them, can't you, with this celebration? Yeah, it's great. I mean, you, you know you're pretty much done and dusted when you score that, that late goal. You know, there's very little time for Swansea to come back into it. So to come from 1-0 down and push yourself up in that table as well is good news. I've been to all three Checker Trade Trophy games. It's obviously an under-21 side in that tournament. They lost against uh, Mansfield Town last week, one goal to nil, to put us out of the trophy. But it's been a terrific experience. I've enjoyed the games. Yeah, I, I like the experience for the, for the young players there. I like you, they're going out and they're playing against men. And that's a massive difference who, who scrap every week for a living. And I think that's vital experience for them going forward. So they've given a good account of themselves. We don't progress, but uh, certainly the experience is, is one that they'll take forward with them throughout their careers. I enjoyed watching uh, the goals from the Football League last weekend. Talking about experience, we've got a few players out on loan. Joe Williams scored an absolute worldy for Barnsley. He did, Darren. It was a terrific game of football at Burton there. But, uh, you know, Joe takes the pride of place when it comes to goals. 
ball drops down onto his left foot and it's a half volley straight into the top corner and I'm not so sure that Joe is going to score a better goal than that in his <laughs> entire career. Now we all know what Kieran Dowell is about and the Nottingham Forest supporters are learning what Kieran Dowell is all about. He's enjoying himself down there with Mark Warburton and David Weir and scored a hat-trick. Yeah, I mean, terrific for, for Kieran as well. I think he was one of those players that if he wasn't going to be playing in and around the first team, he needed to go out and play games on loan. And he's certainly done well for Nottingham Forest, none more so than a hat-trick against Hull. Mm, a couple of Kieran Dowell-esque goals as well. And that's just about it for part one. We'll have a change of location again for part two. We'll be back in our regular studio where I'll be joined by Derek Manfield. But for now, it's au revoir from me. And it's au revoir from him. Welcome back to part two. As you can see, I'm joined in the Everton Show studio by Derek Manfield. Welcome to the Everton Show for the very first time, Thank Derek. you, Daz. Nice to be here. Great to have you on board. I just wish it was happier circumstances for the football club. It's not been the start we wanted. It's not. It's been a, a, a difficult, I think, six months. The end of the season wasn't pretty great. And then we looked like we'd turned the corner with the early signings. The optimism rose. Yeah, everyone's saying Everton top four. But this season just hasn't started. We haven't even started the season. I don't know. It's been a difficult start. We've. It's hard to understand. Mm. I don't know why. I don't know how it's happened. But the expectation level was there, and something just never clicked at the start of the season. It was a difficult start to the season, and I think the run of games that we've had since the difficult start are games that we could and should have won. But maybe that's a hangover from the rough start. Possibly, yeah. Um, we should have beaten the teams like Bournemouth. Should have beaten the teams. Oh, we did beat Bournemouth. We should beat Burnley's. But to get a go and get a point at City and deservedly get a point at mm. City, we all thought, yeah, we've the only um, team that's done the so. only team this season to get a point at City. And you, you look at it and you go, well, why, why, why is it stuttered? Why is it stalled? Unzi gets Everton, doesn't he? And Unzi's yeah. the smile is back on the face of the club. It's back on the face of the club. It's back on Unzi's face. We've got to wait and see how we materialise now over the coming weeks. Will David get the job? We just don't know at the moment. But he's got the smile back on certain people in the club anyway. Plenty more to come from Derek Manfield, but let's now hear from Seamus Coleman or Republic of Ireland International. Still out injured at the moment, but he still found time at Finch Farm to give us my firsts. Uh, my first car was a Mazda 121, a little white one. Looks like a Ford Fiesta, identical to a Ford Fiesta nearly, and uh, yeah, the gear stick was about that height, and um, I got serious stick for it, but uh, I loved it and enjoyed driving it until it eventually blew up on me, so. It was when I was about 18, I think, with uh, my wife's mum and dad. We went to south of France, um, so yeah, 17, 18 I think I didn't, I think my first flight was when I was 17 for football and then first holiday when I was 18, so. Um, oh my God, you're nearly making me sad here. Uh, little pet poodle, Snippy, little white fluffy thing. Uh, we loved him like, but uh, unfortunately, he took a stroll down the town and, and didn't come back. My brother, uh, Francis and, and Stevie are, much more into music than me. Like I had an iPod or no MP3 player, and I, I wouldn't have known how to put music on it. So whatever music they would have put on. So I collected glasses in the bar uh, where my dad worked in the Bayview Hotel um, on a Friday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday night, and um, and I'd done some other work in the summer in that same hotel. Robbie Keane that night, uh, I came on against Tottenham. I think, I, yeah, I've got Robbie Keane's and Shea Givens shirt up in the up in my home house, my mum and dad's house. So I think Robbie Keane's, yeah. But I'm not one for swapping shirts now. First boots, I still, my mum still has them. Um, a pair of Umbros, I'm not sure what, what make or what um, type to wear, but did a little bit of orange on them. And yeah, my mum still has them, I think they're couple of sizes too big at the time, but uh, we still have them in the house. It was an own goal. <laughs> that, I was devastated. I was across from that side and I've tried to head it over the bar and I put it in the top corner. And we were, we were I was due to go home and go out, uh, go out that night with my girlfriend, 
who's now my wife, but uh, I remember being too upset that I didn't want to go out. But that was my first own goal, but my first uh, goal was against Bray. I only scored one for Sligo, so I broke against Bray, Bray Wanderers, so it was left foot, I cut in and, and finished it with my left foot, so good memory, it's on YouTube. Derek, any team, any squad will miss somebody like Seamus Coleman. Yeah, um, massive blow. The, I saw the challenge. Well, I, I, I haven't seen the challenge because for once the TV, TV wouldn't show the replay of it. Mm. But uh, it was a horrible tackle, horrible break. Uh, and my concern is, you know, when they have an injury, it's how you get over it. But it's that first tackle, that first thing mm. in a game. Has Seamus, will Seamus be affected by it? Will he be able to get in that first challenge and not worry about it? I hope he does. He, he's been badly, badly missed. He's mm. he's an energetic lad, and, and the progress he's made in the last eight, nine years at Ockham has been absolutely fantastic. And rightly so, he's now captain of his country, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the armband here in the very near future. People say about Everton now, where do we go from here? But of course, you went on to win everything with Everton Football Club, but it wasn't always that way, Derek, was the year? You had some tough times as well. Everybody, I think, that plays for Everton at some point plays in a team that gets booed off the pitch. and. Let's get it right, the punters wanted Howard. Yeah, they did. Uh, go back to Christmas 83. I'd been in the side less than less than a month, six weeks. And we played at home to Coventry. Box Day, I think it was, or 27. And it was awful. <laughs> it was the worst game I've been involved in. So much so that they didn't only just boo us. They used to provide cushions for the seats in the main that's stand. That's and they rained down on the pitch. <laughs> I've still got a couple at home under, <laughs> in the bed. So whoever was in, in, in row row nine, seat three, so I've got your cushion at home. But... We were going through a rough time, a really rough time. We went to Wolves the following day and got beat 3-0. Came home against someone else, got junior. It, it was awful football. Mm. Then all of a sudden, from nowhere, five months later, we're FA Cup winners. But how did that happen? Again, I can't put a finger on it, but I remember going to, Q, to Birmingham City around about early January 84, and we turned up in that silver kit on the day. Yeah. And we were all ready to go, all chains, boots up, everything. And the referee walks in and goes, you can't wear that kit tonight, boys. It's going to clash under the floodlights with Birmingham's kit. We all went, what are we going to do? And with that, in walks the Birmingham kit man with Birmingham's away kit. Yellow, blue, yellow. Mm -hmm. Tradition 11 away kit. Won the game 2-0. Didn't lose a 20 odd <laughs> game. So I'm, I'm saying thanks to Birmingham City to make us wear their, their kit. But it, it just, I don't know, it just changed all of a sudden. Colin Harvey was promoted to first team uh, mm -hmm. coach. Peter Reid had signed. Andy Gray had come in. I'd start to find my way into the team and find my feet as well. So, But we had a, a collective understanding about everyone. Everyone knew their role. Everyone knew what they had to do. And, and you look at people, I look at defenders, they're looking to get the ball and pass it around. I was told by Howard, head the ball, mm. to get it down, give it to people who use it, give it to Reedy, give it to Sheeds, give it to Brace, give it to Gary Stevens. So I did. We didn't complicate things in those days. Mm. But how it turned around, I don't know, but, but what a turnaround it was. We had a, a wonderful five months. And it continued on for another two and a half years. It was a brilliant time. Confidence is such a big thing. It is, mate, isn't yeah. it? Right, let's start to look ahead now to the weekend home fixture at Goodison Park with Watford. Uh, Sunday's a massive game for the club. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great game. It's a great opportunity um, to, to get back to winning ways. And Sunday's about Everton Football Club. And you know we need a win, and we need a win for the fans. We need a win for the players, desperately, uh, to give them some confidence. And we all need to come together. And, and be together and, and win a game of football. Some may say you've been unfortunate those three, game, three games in charge have been away from home at, at difficult venues as well. You've now got an opportunity at, at Goodison Park. How, how much does that mean to you to be uh, standing on the touchline as manager at Goodison? It means everything. Um, it'd be great to get back to Goodison Park, three tough away games, um, but you know you play the cards that you dealt in. And certainly, you know, you won't find me complaining or moaning about um, difficult fixtures. Um, it'd be great to get back to Goodison, and I can't wait to stand there in front of 40,000 Evertonians who I know will get behind everybody on, on Sunday afternoon. Derek, no two ways about it. it it's a must win game, surely, against Watford at Goodison. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a three points are essential. Uh, we can't afford to be around that relegation zone too much longer. We need the points in the bag. We need goals. We need confidence. And it starts by beating Watford and hopefully put on a decent performance and, and getting the right result. What have you made of Dominic Calvert-Lewin this season? I like his energy. I like his determination. Um, he, he's a hard-working centre-forward young lad making his way in the game. But his effort rubs on, on, on other people. And he's done, I think he's done OK. I think he's done really well. Been impressed with him. But 
he needs to put that goal scoring attribute into his game. And Jordan Pickford's done well too. He's been outstanding. Um, bit concerned when he sat when he signed about his height. I didn't think he was tall enough, but he dominates his area, dominates his box, and without Pickford, we could have lost by even more goals in, in certain games this season and I've been very impressed with him. I know you've been in France this week for the Lyon game and you, you get to as many games as you can and you don't like the corporate side of it, do you? You prefer to be in the throat box amongst the fans. It's good being the fan. It, it takes you back to my days in the 70s, going to the, on the street and going to certain away games and it, it's nice to, 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 to be around them but I like listening to the comments because mm. some, of the, some of them have different opinions on different people and different players and it, it's interesting and I like to cock the ear out and listen to the thing but it's nice being with the fans because they spend a lot of their time and effort getting to the away games and I like being around it was good fun it takes you back to the days when you used to cycle across from uh, the other side of the water and get the autographs outside Belfield yeah cycle to Belfield and, and try and get in there and go to Lee and say no you can't come in so <laughs> cycling around the back jump on the water watch the training did it so many times as a, as a, as a youngster never expected to, to actually drive through those green gates and, and do what I did but had a wonderful, wonderful time playing football and a great six years at the club I've adored all my life. That's what they call living the dream, isn't it? It's more than living the dream, Dad. Living the dream plus a bit more, mate, I promise you. It's been a pleasure to be in the company of Derek Manfield. And thank you for joining us too on this week's Everton show. Please do join us again in seven days' time. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.